In the 1800s, men gathered at a small Cleveland club called The Ark, planting just a seed of what's now the city's Natural History Museum. The Ark was really about a, a gathering place for a bunch of people that were interested in natural history very early in, in the history of, of the area. And they needed a place to discuss the things that they were interested in, from birds to insects to plants. And the cabin really became like this hub of that kind of interest. And it really led to the genesis of the founding of the museum itself. More than a century of ambitious explorations and up-close nature studies are now on view in the museum's centennial exhibition. This exhibit is really about the efforts and individuals that built a natural history museum for the Cleveland community through the collection of all the specimens that we have and the sharing of that science with the people that come here. Museum visitors, for instance, can see some of the specimens Dr. Sonia Taraguchi found studying moth diversity. The exhibit features a recreation of her desk where she worked from the 1970s to 90s. She was working with tens of thousands of specimens of moths that were collected during her sampling season across uh, Northeast Ohio. And she would need to identify all those moths. She would need to pin them and make them museum quality and label them and database them. Historic photos and videos throughout the exhibit help tell the stories behind what's on display. This includes the story of a sled dog named Balto, who led a heroic mission in the 1920s. So there was what, the diphtheria outbreak in Alaska, and the nutshell is that they had to get the serum to, to treat the diphtheria to Nome, and it had to go across large expanse of, of frozen wilderness to get there, and they used dog sleds at the time. And so Balto was a member of a dog sled team that did, made that trip to get to Nome to save, to basically save the town from this outbreak. A couple of years after that mission, Balto ended up in need. And he wound up kind of in a, a, a sideshow in California where a, a Cleveland businessman saw him and the, yeah, and the survivors of his team and they were really in, in bad shape and badly treated. And so he, uh, he rescued him and you know, raised the funds to bring him back to Cleveland. And Balto and his comrades spent the last uh, years of their lives at the Brookside Zoo in Cleveland, which would have been in this area at the time, and actually would eventually evolve into the Metro Park Zoo. This celebration of the past comes as the museum is in the midst of a major expansion. Looking to the future, they are changing the way they present science to the community. Visitors should notice those changes in 2024 when the museum opens all new galleries. They're presented in a new way that isn't quite the same as you've experienced before. We've moved away from a timeline and we've really talked more about case studies and processes and the questions that people really ask about science. And that's about getting your own answers, figuring out what part of science that you like the most.